I am apparently the jerk because I'm not lending my sister-in-law $10,000 for her stupid fancy wedding. Apparently, I have to give it to her because I'm wealthy. Well, you know what I'm going to say to her? My mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and my husband... I'm going to tell them this. I learned the hard way in life that you can never please everyone, no matter how hard you try or how good you are to them. I've also learned that people can be so greedy and self-centered and will be quick to forget about all the good things that you've done for them once they ask you for help and you say no. If anyone has told me that my sister-in-law would turn around to say horrible things about my husband and me, just because we did not have what she wanted, I would not have believed it. My husband and I made hard sacrifices for her, well, many times, and yet, just she forgot all of that and chose to focus on the one time we said no to her. Hey, I'm OP33 female. This is my story. I met my husband a couple years ago in my single girl era. I was a fresh college graduate who was confused about what to do with her life. While my husband already had his foot on the ground, like every other love story, boy met girl, we went on multiple dates and fell in love. From there, our love blossomed in a two-year relationship. And then we got married after realizing that we were meant to be. Since then, we've been married for three years, and I'll give you a bit of a backstory about my husband, Dean. Dean's the oldest and only son of his family. His father passed away a couple years before I met him, leaving just him, his mom, and younger sister, Sophie. Before Dean's dad passed away, he left a good amount of inheritance for his family, and the money was shared amongst them equally. After Dean got his share of the inheritance, he was wise and lucky enough to invest it into some cryptocurrency at the time when the market was doing great. And he made a lot of profit. See, it was the profit he made from the investment that he used to start up his small business and buy a condo that we live in. It's a small condo, but we love it. On the other hand, after Dean's mom and sister got their share of the inheritance, guys, they spent it all. I'm talking ran through it. Um, Dean's mom, she got the inheritance, and they went luxury shopping. They went to do all these vacations, reckless lifestyle, other unnecessary things until they had nothing left. According to Dean, it took his mother and sister less than three months to become broke to the extent of depending on him, for money, for food, and gas. Well, as the oldest uh, son of the family, Dean believed it was his responsibility to look after his mom and younger sister, so he took it upon himself to cater to their needs and provide whatever they asked him for. Knowing that Dean was a soft person who would never say no, his mom and sister always took advantage of him and would borrow lots of money from him and never pay back. The first time I met my husband's family, I could clearly see that they were taking advantage of his soft heart. His mom would continually ask him for things, and if she did not get it as fast as she wanted, she would play the emotional card because she knew Dean would never say no to her. So, his sister, Sophie, deliberately refused to work or keep a job because she knew that she could always call her big brother for help. And in less than an hour, he would bail her out of any situation. Well, you know, as somebody who has just been introduced to the family, I could not stop Dean from attending all of his mother or sister's needs, even when it didn't make any sense. The only thing I used to tell him was to ensure he only lent the same amount of money he could afford to lose, because we both knew that they would never pay him back. Even after Dean and I married, I did not stop him from taking care of his mom, especially his mother. I don't know about other people, but I sincerely think it's a great thing for children to help and take care of their old parents if they can afford to do it. I'm saying this because so many parents literally deny themselves a lot of things and even pause their lives to make sure they give their children a good life. So it's only fair for the children to care for them in any way that they can. This isn't me sounding entitled and it's just the way things should be. So as I was saying, I never stopped Dean from caring for his mother or doing things for her. The only problem I had was the problem with his younger sister, Sophie, who was not so young. She was more like the entitled spoiled brat of the family who believed that life was a fairy tale. Sophie was the sassy, dramatic sister who did not take life seriously, and she just always believed that life revolved around dating cute guys and shopping every day. And, of course, going on vacations. 
She literally saw her brother Dean at her bank account and said it was stashed with money and she did not mind calling him every day to ask for it. The only good thing was Sophie and I got along well. Maybe she pretended to like me so that she could get favors from me and that worked out well for her. I've lost count of the number of times I advised Sophie to get a job. Funny enough, she had completely uh, gone to college and had good degrees, so she did not have any excuse for not working. If she would just listen to my advice and got a job, she would only work for a couple of days and then quit in less than a week. Her excuse would always sound like, geez, sis, that job was too serious. Sister, you have no idea how boring the job was. I don't want to spend my whole life sitting in front of a computer. That's for losers, etc. Sophie would always come up with different excuses and even her own mother could not do anything about it. Now that I think about it, I've come to realize that the reason Sophie did not last in any job she got was because she knew that she would always fall back on her brother and it made her extremely lazy. There were even a time when Sophie, she told Dean and me that she wanted to start an online importation business and she needed funds. She convinced us that she wanted to deal in female wear and that she found out through research that it was a profitable niche. She claimed that she had both physical and online friends who would patronize her business and that she was sure she would thrive in the business because she was into fashion herself. Let's say Dean and I gave her a business idea, a thought, and we decided to fund it, right? It was a lot of money, but we didn't mind since it was an amount we could spare. I was even happy about her starting an online business because I believe she would become more responsible and independent once she began. Well, you know what? I was so damn wrong. Although, Sophie started the business, she ended up wearing 90% of the female wares that she imported. And that's how everything became history. She ended up giving half of the 10% she didn't wear to her friends for free. And she sold the remaining half and squandered the money on God knows what. One of the things that Dean and I did after we married was to open a joint account. Even though Dean was doing financially better than me... We knew it was very important to save, so we opened the joint account and we saved aggressively so we could get our own rental property. For three years, Dean and I put money every month into the account and we strictly followed the rule of never taking money out of the account unless it was an emergency. Unlike Sophie, who lives a flamboyant lifestyle even when she earns what? Nothing. Dean and I lived very simple lives. We've always cut our costs according to our pockets and did not spend our money on liabilities. Sometimes even Sophie would mock Dean and me for living boring lives and not buying expensive clothing brands or jewelry, even on our birthdays. But Dean and I understood that's why we live like that. Around the second year of our marriage, Sophie met a guy and they fell in love. Their relationship was a bit on and off type. Well, well, anyways... But he still sailed through it. I'll be honest, I did not think Sophie's boyfriend would end up proposing to Sophie after the enormous fights and numerous amount of times and countless breakups. <laughs> I was so surprised when I saw her engagement video online and when she showed me her pretty engagement ring in person. They had only dated for a year when her boyfriend popped the question and you know what? She said yes. About a month after Sophie got engaged, she started planning for their wedding. Being the fairy tale princess that she always was, Sophie was hellbent on having her fairy tale dream wedding. And I'm not even kidding about this, guys. Like, I'm not even kidding at all. The first day Sophie told me about the kind of wedding she wanted, I thought she was joking. I didn't need a psychic to tell me that the wedding she had in mind would be a very expensive one. Not just that, she kept bragging about the brand of gown she would wear. The hall she would use, the decor, and the celebrity makeup artist and stylist who would use for her wedding. She even went as far as saying that if things did not go according to plan, then the wedding would not be held. To show how serious she was about her dream wedding, she posted her plans on her Instagram page just so she could brag to her online friends that her wedding was about to be one of the best weddings in town. When I realized that she was serious about all the things she bragged about, I was kind of worried about the financial pressure she would put on her fiancé. Especially since she wasn't working, did not have any plans to work, and did not have any secret money stashed away somewhere in a safe. As a concerned sister-in-law, I even tried talking to her into doing an affordable wedding so that she could use the rest of the money for their honeymoon. 
or even do something more meaningful for herself and her husband-to-be. But she was hell-bent on having her fairy tale Disney wedding. When I tried to convince her and she did not listen, I wished her well and secretly prayed for all of her heart desires to come through, even though it looked impossible. All the while, I didn't know that Sophie literally had plans to borrow money from Dean to fund her fairy still living. And the most annoying part is she wanted to get money from him without my knowledge, not knowing that Dean and I have a joint account and he can't take a large amount of money without my approval. I think two months after Sophie bragged about her fairy wedding to me, I returned from the work one day and Dean told me Sophie called just to borrow a bit of money for the wedding. From the look on Dean's face, I knew he was willing to give Sophie whatever amount she wanted, even if it meant he had to go broke, and I wasn't going to let that happen. When I asked Dean how much Sophie was asking for, he said $10,000 and I almost went insane. According to Dean, Sophie's claim is that she would pay him back after the wedding. And while we both knew that was nothing more than an utter lie, Sophie had never paid back any money that she borrowed from Dean, and it would be a miracle for her to pay back $10,000 without stepping into the boat of entitlement. Without being around the bush, I told Dean that we could not, and I mean we could not, let Sophie get that amount of money for a mere wedding. Well, honestly, we could not even afford to give that amount without touching a huge part of our savings. $10,000? Also, Dean said that he had a long conversation with her. He was shocked at all her wedding plans and how much Sophie was willing to throw away for a one-day party. So, he came up with the idea of meeting up and talking to Sophie. The goal of meeting was to try to talk Sophie into cutting down her wedding budget and telling her that we could not afford to give her $10,000. Long story short, last week I met up with Sophie and things did not go well. When I told Sophie that we could not afford to give her the amount she asked for, I tried to convince her to cut down her wedding budget so she would not put herself under a lot of pressure and discomfort of other people, and guess what? She started yelling at me and raining abuse on me, and she called me jealous, a jealous sister-in-law and a manipulative witch. Yeah, well, she then just uh, said that I was jealous of her wedding and would surprise me by surpassing mine and that I poisoned her brother's mind not to give her the money that she asked for. She even said that I was greedy and that I wanted to take all her brother's money for myself. But guys, then she continued to just keep calling me name after name, and I was very disappointed when I left the location and felt so horrible inside. Even though Sophie was dramatic, difficult to bear, and extreme at times, I never wished her bad. I only advised her because I wanted the best for her and for everyone. When I told Dean everything that happened, he was so mad that she insulted me and did not want to give Sophie a penny anymore. I was even the one convincing him that it was his sister's wedding and that it would be bad if we did not support her somehow. It took me three days to constantly talk to Dean before he changed his mind. So yesterday, we gave Sophie $2,000 as a gift and we told her not to worry about paying it back and I know that... The amount we gave to her is not even up to half the amount she asked for, but I did not expect Sophie or my mother-in-law to react the way that they did. I think four hours after Dean sent the money to Sophia, I was scrolling through my Facebook feed as usual, and I stumbled upon a post Sophie made, and a fresh post. The caption read, In life, if you think that family will always be there for you when you need them the most, then the joke's on you. When they're rich, most people become stingy, proud, and arrogant and treat other people like beggars. It even gets worse if they're married to greedy snakes who want to swallow all the money. I didn't need to soothsay to tell me that the post about it was me. It was crystal clear it was aimed at me. She was just indirectly posting about her brother and me and she referred to him as stingy, proud, and arrogant. My goodness, I was shocked by my bone marrow. If she only knew the number of things we had to postpone to give her that $2,000, she would not have gone online to publicly humiliate me and her brother like that. There's no asking if Dean was angry when I showed the post to him because he was irate. It felt like a dream that Sophie could do something like that after everything that we've done to her. And just when we were trying not to make a fuss after we saw Sophie's post, my mother-in-law called Dean. 
The first thing she said was, why didn't you lend your sister the amount of money she asked for? Dean told her that he could not just go to the bank and pull out 10 grand for her because it's too much and he can't afford us. But my mother-in-law was not having it. She starts screaming at Dean and calling him names and she said Dean was a liar and that he could give Sophie more than 10,000 if he wanted to. But he was stingy and did not care about his little sister's happiness and she did not even let Dean say anything else. She just kept yelling at him and trying to play her a usual emotional card, which obviously did not work. When Dean could not take it anymore, he told his mom that he could not just give Sophie the $10,000 that she asked for because the money that he had did not belong to him anymore. Well, guys, the moment that he said that... Well, my mother-in-law transferred her anger onto me and began to call me every single name that she could possibly think of. She said that she always knew I was an evil person and I had to come tear her family apart. As if calling me evil was not enough, she called me a gold digger and said that I only allowed a dean to follow because of his money and she would not be surprised if I asked for a divorce the very next day so I could take half of his property. Well, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, and the minute she said that Dean, well, Dean warned her never to speak to me like that again. He ended the call on her, and guys, I felt so terrible, I didn't know that all those times I was treating my mother-in-law with love, she only pretended to like me. Dean apologized for everything his mom said to me, but the deed had already been done. I'll be honest, a part of me really feels bad about everything that's happening, and I'm so confused right now. At the same time, the other part of me does not want to give a flying duck about what my mother-in-law or sister-in-law think about me. I just don't know why people are like this. No one saw me as a gold digger when we were giving her money literally every month or when we funded Sophie's business, which ended before it started. I'm really struggling with my thoughts and guys, I need help. If we give $10,000 to Sophie, it might take us two to three years to save up the money, and if we don't, things might never remain the same again. So, here's the question I'll ask you guys. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my husband to loan his younger sister money for her fancy wedding? Please, guys, help me out. I don't know what to do. I look forward to your comments and all your suggestions. Update number one. Hello, everyone. I just want to thank you guys so much for your comments and suggestions. This really means so, so much to me. Well, honestly, if you all had not left your comments, I would have made a grave mistake that would have taken me years to recover. All this while, I did not see Sophie as being entitled, but you guys have made that very evident. I don't know why my mother-in-law thinks that Dean and I can just throw away 10 grand because her precious daughter wants to have a fairy tale wedding. Someone here commented that if my mother-in-law really cares about Sophie's and happiness so much, then she should loan the money. Well, you know what? You're right. If she truly wants her daughter to be happy, then she should go ahead and give her the money herself. The truth is that people love to dictate what should happen in another person's life or what another person should, can, or can't do with his or her money. But when you ask them to do the same thing, you realize that they can't. Indeed, my mother-in-law's manipulative and entitled person, and she was trying to guilt trip Dean, not just to give the 10k to Sophie despite knowing so well that Sophie would never pay back the money. So, I wanted to tell you guys that after my mother-in-law called and Dean had ended the call on her, she texted the following morning and said so many nasty things. She called Dean a disappointment and said that if he did not give the 10k to Sophie, he would have to pick between me or them. Dean was so mad when he saw the text message and he wanted to call her back to give her a piece of his mind, but I stopped him. When my mother-in-law saw that Dean did not react the way she expected him to, or call her back like an angry person would, she starts blowing up his phone with calls. Yep, LOL. I was with his phone and I made sure that he did not take any of them. At a point, she got tired of calling and I thought it was over, only for her to tag me in a Facebook post that evening. Well... When I got my Facebook notification that she just tagged me in a post, I was surprised. Guys, my surprise turned to anger when I saw the post my mother-in-law tagged me in. She basically made a post about me expressing how much she regrets having me as her daughter-in-law. She said that accepting me as her daughter-in-law was a mistake, and that I turned Dean against his family so I could have all his money. 
That woman said a lot of crappy things about me, and the painful part was some of her family members, who had no idea what was going on, came to the comment to support her. Although, you know what? I'm pained, I'm grateful of all this happening, because my mother-in-law is someone I love so much. And I would never believe that she could do a thing like that just because of money. Her son Dean is even more mad, and he still can't believe that people he took care of for many years without a complaint could do something like this just because he refused to, well, meet their needs just once? Um, that's for all now, guys. I'll make another update soon. Thank you for your contribution and comments. Update number two. Hey guys, you're the best community anybody could ever ask for. I apologize for taking so long to make another update. I just needed some time off of social media for a bit. So there's a certain comment that really, really caught my attention, guys. And I thought about it for a long time. Somebody actually went out and commented... The reason my mother-in-law and sister-in-law is so mad that Dean did not give Sophie the amount of money she asked for is because they both see me as a threat. I actually thought about it, and I connected the dots, and I think that's the reason Sophie and Dean told me uh, not to tell about the 10k. She must have thought that I would be a stumbling block for her if I knew about the money. Well, this isn't about me being a stumbling block. It's about throwing away years of hard work, sweat, and long hours of work just to please a big baby who's hell-bent on making her stupid, immature dream come true. Speaking about dreams, Sophie's wedding is around the corner, and I cannot wait to see how her dream became a reality. Now, the main tea. Early this week, Sophie called Dean after uh, too long of no contact. When she called, she was crying over the phone, and she said that Dean had forsaken his original family for a woman. Me, who could leave him any time. Then she said, quote, If Dad were alive, do you think that he would be proud of you? You were supposed to take care of me and Mom, and you were supposed to be my big brother. But you abandoned me when I needed you the most. Guys, despite all her fake tears and everything she said, Dean did not say anything to her. Maybe she thought Dean would ask her to stop crying or her emotional game of bringing up their late father would work, but it did not work. When she was done crying, she told Dean that her wedding was to be held in two weeks and that she was inviting him and all Dean said was okay. And then a weird silence followed and after that seemed like a minute of silence, Sophie asked, Are you going to ask about mom? She was shocked that Dean did not mention anything about their mom. The thing is... Dean was still angry, especially since my mother-in-law would just wake up on some mornings and she would send Dean a long, angry message. When she asked that question, Dean told Sophie that he would see her at the wedding and he ended the call. As it is right now, Dean and I have made a decision and we don't care what the consequences of it will be. Everything that's happened in the last few weeks has only revealed the kind of family he has and what they really care about. As for Sophie's wedding, we thought of not attending, but on second thought, it would be a sign of weakness to not attend. So guys, thank you so much, everyone. Your suggestions and comments have really been helpful so far. Update number three. Well, guys, the long-awaited gist is here. I know you've all been waiting for this update, and I have to come tell you everything, so Sophie's wedding was two weeks ago, and I'm no gossip but I'll start by saying her wedding was a mess. Absolutely nothing went according to the plan that she used to brag about. She wore an obliviously obvious cheap gown. The hall decor was an eyesore and everything was just giving broke bride vibe. I'll be honest, I laughed so hard when I got to the wedding reception venue and I made sure that she knew why and what I was laughing at. If she were humble enough, we would have made her wedding a beautiful and memorable one or, you know, one even on a budget. But she wanted this celebrity-style wedding, and it ended up being a quote, what the hell is going on here type wedding. Now, to get to it, when Dean and I got to the reception venue, my mother-in-law and Sophie were not happy to see me. My mother-in-law's face literally turned red when I walked in. To show how petty we were, Dean's name card was placed close to Sophie and their mom, but mine was placed four seats away from Dean, Sophie, and their mother. When Dean saw it, he did not say anything or question it. He just politely asked the person next to me to swap seats with him, and the man agreed. This clearly infuriated Sophie and my mother-in-law, and they could not stop staring at us in anger. When it was time for speeches, Sophie claimed that she wanted to give a speech and as well thank everyone who contributed to the success of her wedding. She literally thanked everyone at the table except Dean and me. 
Then when she was done, she called Dean, her only sibling, and me out in the front and claimed that she wanted to thank us specifically. Well, the moment that she said that, I knew that she was up to no good. But we decided to play along. When we got to the front, she started sharing how Dean used to be good to her. And then she began to say humiliating and negative things about Dean and me in everyone's presence. Everybody was so shocked and they all started to record the scene. I kept pulling Dean so we could walk away from the cameras, but he refused to move. He waited patiently for her to finish saying all the things that she had in mind. and Then he politely asked for the microphone. When Dean got the microphone, all he said was, Mom, Sophie, I just want to use this opportunity to let you all know that from this moment we cease being a family. Yes, I've chosen Margaret over both of you. You're both ungrateful and I regret doing everything I did for the both of you. Then he dropped the mic like a rapper, grabbed my hand and walked out of the hall. My mother-in-law and Sophie were in disbelief and they watched us as we walked out of the hall in style. To be honest, Dean shocked me. Even when we got home, I still thought Dean was bluffing about what he said. It was until my mother-in-law called last week to cry her fake tears. She said Sophie had abandoned her after the wedding and that she was suffering so much. She called because she had no food or money for gas, and she was sorry for everything. Dean laughed so hard and just said, Your suffering has only just began. And then he ended the call. That same day, he blocked his mom and Sophie's number on his phone and my phone to show me he was not joking around. Earlier this week, my mother-in-law showed up at her house unannounced, and Dean, he even called the police on her without thinking twice. She was so shocked that she did not even know what to say. She left in shame and has not shown up again to date. I'm guessing she'll learn the hard way that she's no longer family. She brought this on herself and I feel no remorse for her. After all, she has her golden child, so they can just always be together. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm saying uh, this a very big thank you to everybody out there who went ahead to suggest your comments on my post. You're all the best and I would not have gotten this far without you. So guys, a lot of people in the comment section were actually saying that Dean, Dean did not handle this properly. So I want to come to you guys and see what do you think? Do you think at first Dean was too much of a pushover? And this was why his mom and sister were acting like this in the first place, because he enabled them and just allowed to give, give, give. They even told us in the story if it wasn't for OP, Having the joint bank account, then Dean would have given the $10,000 even though he didn't really have that much in the savings. He would have gone broke giving it to her. Guys, I want to know your thinking on it. What would you have done in that situation? Let's just talk about it in the comment section down below. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every day. If you guys did enjoy it, consider subscribing. I hope you have a great day. Remember, life is short, so if you want to do something, go do it. Guys, have a great one. I'll see you tomorrow, and of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.